the Chinese have so many ancient practices of holistic healing. In Qigong, the practice of Chinese medicine, or what some may call Chinese yoga, has really spread and become popular all over the world. Hello, I'm Moon. Today, I'll be joined by Joanna Shun, a Qigong teacher and expert, who will explain the fundamental principles of Qigong and show you some basic movements in this ancient Chinese practice of holistic healing. So Joanna, I have a really simple question. What is Qigong? Qigong is one of the branches of traditional Chinese medicine. You have your acupuncture, your herbal medicine, and you have Qigong. In medical Qigong, you have experts who are trained practitioners, and they can move the qi or manipulate the qi by moving their hands over a person's body. Okay, so first of all, what is qi? Qi is your life force or vital energy. And the term qi gong actually means to cultivate or practice or work with your vital energy or life force. Okay, so qi gong is the life force. So it's really, really important. It's in everything. Qi is in everything, correct. Okay. And the practice of qi gong is uh, working with your own qi to build it up, to make it stronger. Um, and to live a longer and healthier life. So they use Qigong in the medical profession. Do they also use it in lay ways, in lay term ways? Of course. So one of the practices that a lay person who is not trained as a medical practitioner can utilize Qigong for themselves is to practice Qigong. There are different types of Qigong, probably several hundreds of different uh, methods of Qigong that you can practice. Mm -hmm. The one that I teach and practice myself on a daily basis is called Wild Goose, or in Chinese, Da Yan Qigong. It's okay. one of the oldest practices. It has a very ancient and rich history. Okay, are the movements like a wild goose? Is this the reason? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, the just... movements of wild goose Qigong mimic the movements of, of the wild geese like search for food, okay. fly over water, seeking the nest. Right. So is it the most popular type of Qigong wild goose? It's not necessarily the most popular, but it is quite popular. And what's more okay. important is that it's extremely effective. Okay. The Chinese government did a study of several different kinds of Qigong. Right. And of the ones studied, they did find that wild goose or Yan Qigong is one of the most effective ones. Okay. So, Joanna, mm -hmm. you're going to now show us some basic movements in this Wild Goose Qigong? Right, so I'll be doing the basic movements of Wild Goose Qigong, which is about the first seven movements. Okay, great. Next, Wild Goose Qigong. What I'm going to show you the first seven movements of the Wild Goose, or Tai Yan Qigong. Before we begin, the very first posture is actually called starting form, and the feet should be shoulders wide and parallel. Throughout the set, we keep what we call the Qigong palm. The Qigong palm has space between each neighboring finger, and the thumb is pulled open wider between the index finger. This is sometimes called the tiger's mouth. Mm -hmm. Having the fingers extended without being too tense but too limp allows the qi to flow all the way to the blood, uh, all the way to the fingertips. The last thing is the tongue. The tongue should touch the roof of the mouth behind the front teeth. It should be a natural place just to gently lift up and touch on the roof of the mouth. The teeth are closed lightly. You don't want to clench your jaw. You're trying to minimize any added tension or tightness in the body. So we'll be breathing through the nose. And the final thing is the mind. One of the most important things in doing Qigong is your intention. If I do the movements that I'm making a grocery list or thinking about what happened yesterday or looking forward to something that's going to happen this evening, my mind is not being harnessed to move the qi and direct it to get the most benefit. So the mind should be clear, free from distractions, and this is part of the reason why doing some meditation is a good idea to train your mind. But regardless of whether you meditate or not, the Qigong movements themselves are like a moving meditation. So yes. it's most important that the mind be involved. So we're gonna begin from starting form. Then I'm gonna bend forward at the hips 
and let the palms face the buttocks. This is a gallbladder point and let the hands go down the sides of the legs, the sides of the feet until I'm in front of the toes and then I bring my body up, bring the arms, opening the arms and turning the palms up. This movement encourages chi to go into the laogong points in the palms of the hands and then I'm going to give the chi to my lower dantian about the level of the navel. Then I'm going to bring the hands up the stomach meridian to the chest, push straight out ahead, slightly bend from the hips, turn the palms out. This increases chi in the three yin meridians of the hands. Then I'm going to come off the heels, let the thumbs touch the fingers, and place the hands on the back over the kidneys. Then I'm going to drag the hands to the front around the waist and drop to my heels. This movement expels sickness chi from the hands and also it vibrates the internal energy of the body. And then I repeat this movement. Coming off the heels, making the claw, letting thumbs touch fingers, covering the kidneys, giving chi to the kidneys. Okay, so that was the seventh step. Mm -hmm. So Joanna, I noticed that everything was so flowing and at the last minute you just did this really swift kind of movement like mm -hmm. this. And it just was very different from what you were doing. Right. So what is that movement uh, kind of pronouncing? That movement is called shake upper arms. And the act of dropping down onto the heels vibrates the internal energy in your body and the throwing forward of the hands expels sickness chi from the body. This is the kind of chi that is unhealthy, that is bad. So you want to get rid of the sickness chi. Okay. Other parts of the movements that I did encourage uh, bringing chi from the environment into the palms of the hands. Right. That was this movement mm -hmm. called stretch wings. Mm -hmm. And then bringing the hands to the lower dantian. Mm -hmm. Dantian is one of three energy centers in the body. You have your upper Dantian, your middle Dantian, and your lower Dantian. So giving Qi to the lower Dantian, this is one of the things why Qigong is so helpful. Right. We're born with a limited amount of vital energy. It's finite. Mm -hmm. This comes from our parents at the moment we're conceived. Mm -hmm. And as we mature and grow and age in life, we use up that chi. Right. Sometimes it's simply for natural maturation, mm -hmm. like a baby becoming a toddler, and then a child going through adolescence and puberty, etc. But sometimes we burn up our good healthy chi right. by doing things in excess, like staying up late, you know, maybe alcohol. drinking alcohol, right. eating fast food or you know, processed foods too much, not exercising, etc. So these things also take its toll on the body. The only way that we can really live a longer, healthier life, according to traditional Chinese medicine, is to cultivate and build up some of this qi that we're using. Okay. Since we're only born with a finite amount of this um, original qi, we take in healthy chi by eating good foods, getting enough rest, etc., and the body will make good, you know, chi to supplement the original chi. So this is what qigong is all about. Okay. So Joanna, those were such wonderful, flowing, beautiful movements, and just by watching you, I felt the positive chi come into my own body. So thank you so much. Now you know what Qigong is all about and how it could really benefit your mind, body, and soul. So make Qigong a daily practice in your life. Joanna is a wonderful Qigong teacher, so please visit her website at Just Tai Chi to learn more about Qigong and her amazing classes. Thanks for joining us. For all of my Asian Living Tips, visit my website at yinnyangliving.com. Thank you. Kuo